Well, if it's Thursday night and you're on Facebook, you're watching the Grey Goat Garage live from the Burbank Studios, ombwarehouse.com. Here we go. Um, tonight, I'm going to show you some high-performance engine parts, and um, we've got some, uh, some links to share with you to show you some parts. And uh, the old Grey Goat. Tyler, good to see you. Carl, how you doing, brother? Okay, there's your link. Um, Cliff and Randy, good to see you guys. Cliff, it's always good to see you. Glad I got to see you. Jody Powell, we're talking uh, some billet side covers tonight and some other stuff. So I'm glad you joined in. In case I uh, make any mistakes, you certainly don't have a problem correcting me. So thank you for that. And since, since you're on right now, Jody, um, you know, like I told you, here's the OMB cup and here's the Jody ARC cup. So um, ARC, beautiful products, nice people with the exception of just a couple. And uh, here's a big shout out to ARC. Brr. Woo! Okay. Jody, thanks for stopping by, brother. Good to see you. Um, Karen Krause, Temecula Bob in the house. Um, yeah, I, uh, I I know you guys on the East Coast been cool like the other side of the pillow, like Carl says, but um, that's just downright cold. I don't know how you all do it out there. Um, you know, uh, today, gosh, it only warmed up to like 75. Um, almost put the flip-flops on, but decided against it. So here we are. This is uh, the Grey Goat Garage. I am Eric the Grey Goat. And you're with OMBWarehouse.com, and we're live on Facebook. Um, tonight, we're going to go over some engine stuff back there. And uh, one thing I want a lot of you guys to know is the Doodlebug hydraulic brakes. They are back in stock now. This is not just for Doodlebugs, although it doesn't fit the Motovox without making your own brackets. Um, there's a lot of different uses for this. It's a standard 10-millimeter uh, banjo bolt on the end whatever you wanted to do with this, as long as you had the right hosing to it, dude, you're there, you know, you could run uh, steel braid hose, whatever. But uh, these are back in stock. Um, I'll be having a video on these uh, coming up real soon. Yeah, some of you may know, uh, Victoria and I were working on some video stuff today and uh, we're, we're, we're branching out. You're going to see a lot more of this pretty face all over Facebook, YouTube, the interwebs, the World Wide webs. Uh, spider webs. I'm, I'm going to be everywhere. So um, tonight uh, I'm going to show you the GX200 that I was that I'm going to build. But I also wanted to. Uh, we're going to start off with these. I've never used these damn things before, so you guys get to get to see my first attempt at wire. So my wire just got here this afternoon, so I really have not tried these. Um, last week we talked about header header wrap, and one thing that I've always hated. On the headers and see a great big old ugly hose clamp right there i can't have ugly on my stuff you know my stuff's too pretty for that so i thought let's get some safety wire and let's just safety wire it on there it'll be plenty tight enough so i'm gonna cut me a length of wire off my off my spool and and this is stainless steel wire um i, I bought some aviation stuff uh 0.032 inches thick in diameter so what i'm going to do because this header goes on like this i'm just going to start me a piece right down here at the end of this tape and i'm just going to wrap it around like this kind of get equal length on the on the bottom of the of the wire here and then i'm just going to give this just a little bit of a twist right here and what i'm going to do is for this wire, I want it to be a half, three-eighths of an inch. So these pliers, this little doohickey down here, you clamp down on the wire, and then you slide this back, and that holds the wire in the tool. So, And then once you start going, you just pull on this, and it twists it. So we're going to get these clamped down on this wire. And like I say, I'm going to go about three-eighths of an inch back. And I want my wires to be fairly close together when I do this. So I'm just going to squeeze down, move that thing back. Hopefully it locks. 
squeeze it real hard. Hard to do one-handed live on TV because you know I, I start to sweat when this stuff happens. So here we go. Okay, so now I've got these clamped on there. And now all I have to do is pull on this darn thing. And it twists the wire. So I'm going to pull it till it's tight down on the end of the header. I'm going to release my pliers. And then I'm just going to move this over a little bit here. And then I'm going to do it again. That way I have two attachment points for this wire on this wrap. Here I'm watching and you guys need to be watching. Um, so I'm just going to kind of pull these so they're 180 degrees here. And then I'm going to start this down here with one wrap. Move those wires together a little bit and then grab them with my pliers again. I didn't realize I had to, to grab onto this so tight. Got to set it down for a minute. Sorry. Okay. So now I'm just going to pull on this thing again. Whoop. Get that nice and snug. Release the pliers. And then I can take my side cutters, cut that off, use my foot to slide it somewhere where I can catch it later when I'm wearing my flip-flops. And then I'm just going to fold this over. So... Once it's folded over, um, it's probably going to catch on something. But I think that's going to hold that wrap. I, I'm sure I can do a better job on that. What I'll do is I'll, I'll wind up doing this end because I told you guys I was going to get rid of that, that um, uh, zip tie on there because the, it won't hold up to the heat. But I'll do a better job on this when I'm not in, uh, in a hurry. So that's my tip of the day. Okay? So let, let's put that header off to the side. So I'm digging these. Everything's going to be safety wired. I won't be able to get anything apart, but nothing will fall off, I hope. Okay, so the beer of the week is from Mother Earth Brew Company. It's called Cali Creamin Vanilla Cream Ale. Well, I'm a vanilla fan, so... We're, we're going to give this one, one a shot. Um, you know, I don't like these uh, IPAs because I get, you know, too much Kool-Aid face with it. But um, Cali Creamin is tonight's choice. So we're going to use the patented Grey Goat Garage bottle opener. Knock this cap off of here. And then I'll, I'll pour some out for you, see if I'm going to like it. Normally I can tell by the color. Ooh, that's a nice light pale beer, which is what I like. Um, you know, uh, like, like old man Hint says, uh, you know, he drinks girls light, which is, um, brewed in the Rockies. So we'll let, we'll let the head settle down on that. And then we'll, uh, we'll get started on some stuff. Um, before we get to that, before we get to the billet side cover, I've got some other ARC parts to show you. So I've got this Honda GX 200 block that I'm going to try and beat up on the boys with. Um, those Arizona guys think they make a lot of power, and we're, we're going to do a little bit different. We're going to try and make big power, um, not not just Arizona power. So you'll notice that the OMB standoff plate for the torque converters makes a great little engine stand. First, I'll show you the side cover. Here we've got the uh, ARC PVL uh, billet flywheel. Um, this is for a non-hemi predator because that's the crank that I have. And here's the PVL coil here. And you know, if you guys are on some of the, the Facebook mini bike pages, um, wow, I took a beating over something that I didn't do. Um, I had a, a gentleman buy one of those super fancy, very, just so sweet clear valve covers and he bought gaskets from us here at ombwarehouse.com and then said you guys sold me shitty gaskets my clear valve cover leaks oh you suppose it's really the gasket uh, it's probably that that clear valve cover you know i i 
whatever, Dallas. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Uh, I got more surprises for you, brother. So anyway, this guy's just slamming us because his valve cover leaks. It's all the gasket, right? Can't be that fancy clear valve cover. Say no to clear valve covers. I know they look great and you can't see anything when the engine's running, but you can certainly admire, um, you, you know, if, if you had, you know, super fancy gauge billet roller rockers, you could see those sort of, um, sure. But come on, man. So when I bolted all this together and uh, just to mock it up, I, I put the PVL coil on and the PVL flywheel. It's all lapped in and everything. It's not torqued down. But as I'm doing this, I thought, the cover doesn't go on. Yeah, but you know what? I thought, myself, I should probably go on to Facebook and tell everybody that, you know, PVL is a, a BS company and ARC doesn't know what they're doing. And no, it's about making stuff work. It's about being realistic about the parts. You know, here, I, here I've got a, a Honda block with, with, a, with a different crank in it. Yeah, and a different flywheel and a different ignition. Just because it doesn't work doesn't mean it's their fault. You know, nobody ever wants to blame the Chinese for that $100 engine that they bought. Guaranteed, right? So, anyway, we're going to give this uh, California cream in a try. Cheers. Oh, that's quite delightful. Perhaps a little too sweet for my taste, but you guys know how sweet I am. So, anyway... Back to this stuff, okay? And I do have questions for you, so get your Googles ready, okay? So anyway, I put all this together. I mocked it up. You know, ARC with these flywheels, they include the a special bracket because this is a different coil, and it doesn't just go on to the stock mounts. Um, and this is not for the PVL clone flywheel, the cast flywheel, because that takes a stock coil. So I've got the um, PVL 12,000 RPM. That's right, Dallas, 12,000 RPM coil on here uh, with the matching billet flywheel. Nice pieces, but when I, I couldn't put my, my side cover, my uh, blower housing on, I'm thinking, man, I ought to go trash everybody on Facebook. Say you sell BS parts. Come on, man. All we got to do is just notch the side cover. That's all it takes. You know, dude, I'm nothing special. I mean, boys and girls, I'm nothing special. I have some basic tools, and I was able to figure it out. You know, it's okay to use this. You don't always have to trash somebody on Facebook, you know. So now now I have a, a blower housing that fits. Um, I, I don't care that a little air is going to escape out there. I'm fine with that because this bike's going to be so fast that um, Arizona won't even, become, won't even be a state anymore when I'm done, okay? Well, not with me riding it because I'm going to get a jockey that's 100 pounds. But um, be creative. If, you, if you're doing something that, that takes some creativity, go ahead and be creative. It doesn't hurt a thing. So I've got the blower housing done. It fits. It clears everything. And um, I had to bend the, the coil wire down, the, uh, the on-off wire, the, the, the ground piece here had been that down a little bit to get that to work but um we can all do this you know like i said i'm nothing special i'm just some fat old guy in the garage with with a few tools so don't be afraid don't be chicken right get it done you know we can all do this stuff so um we'll we'll have some uh, other stuff um with that <laughs> Well, we're, what, what you guys don't know is that I had a, a very nice conversation with Temecula Bob, and uh, Bob has agreed to build me a mini drag bike frame and, um, you know, make real tall bars so I can be an ape hanger um, drag racer. Come on, really? I'm just joking. So um, Temecula Bob's going to start on that here uh, in a couple months, but uh, I got a lot of time before Jack uh, for Joe's next mini bike reunion. So we got time to work on things. And, you know, it's like all my bikes. It'll be very, very pretty, okay? So, so anyway, so here's our PBL flywheel. And let's see if I nail this. Nailed it. See that? First shot. 
just going to remove this so I can show you guys what's going on here. This is a, a, a way different deal than your average clone coil. And if you see that I'm being gingerly, so yesterday afternoon, the old goat, I was drilling out a valve cover for a pulse hole. And I said, Eric, don't put your hand there because that drill's going to just grab that metal and go all the way through and it's going to nail your finger. And I thought, nah, that can't happen. Well, yeah, it can happen. So that's why I'm a, I'm a little gingerly in the left hand tonight. So, but anyway, what, what you'll see is four legs on this coil, which is way different than anything that we've ever seen. I, I'm familiar with the PVL coils um, from the Briggs uh, local option uh, 206 that I have. So I could put this right on there and scream the guts out of that engine if I wanted to. But because uh, those are rev limited at 6,100, I believe, 6,200, something like that. But this reacts differently to the coil than the stock one does. The PVL coil, they're easily identified because they have two magnets on there instead of just one like like we're used to with the clone, clone coils um jody can probably uh jody has a video for this by the way um his, his videos are all grainy and and hard to see and everything but he explains it really really well because uh jody's forgotten more than i'll ever know so um there's there's two magnets on this flywheel um and because this is a digital ignition it, um, it has one that, that senses the flywheel position and the other one is creating the, the, the charge for the coil. So th this is going to be uh, a, a great thing, and I'll tell you why. Um, the PVL coil actually retards the ignition under 1,500 RPMs. Once the engine is making that easier to start your engine, once the engine's fired up, you can rev this out to 12,000, and the timing stays consistent. Whereas with the uh, stock coil, um, the, the timing kind of it, it retards itself at, at higher RPMs. That, that's why with, um, with the stock coil, that, that's why they're adjusting the gap uh, to, to try and bring some of that back. But with this, I don't have to. I can gap this at, uh, what did Jody say, uh, 40, between 40 and 45 thousandths and set it, forget it. Um, I'll have to do a little timing on this. I'll have to make sure that my crank is right. Um, but there's uh, instructional videos um, from ARC Racing in regards to this flywheel, the PVL flywheel, and the PVL coil. So um, I, I'm, I'm stoked about these two pieces. I hope to make a lot of power and uh, kick some um, rear end out there at Joe's Mini Bike Reunion next year. So let's set that off to the side. Um, haven't even done a question yet. You know, it's been a long week. I had a customer tell me today, well, he says, well, tomorrow's Friday, so I'll have time to work on this. And I'm like, what? Well, tomorrow's only Thursday. What's today? And I had to look at my phone. Oh, today's Thursday. I better get my stuff together so I can be live on Facebook so you guys see my pretty face. Give me the thumbs up on there. If you have any questions about anything or if you need help finding stuff, I am help at ombwarehouse.com. In the subject line, just put, hey, Greg Goat. I'll hook you up. If I can't help you, you probably don't need it, okay? So anyway, um, we're going to talk about acronyms for the first question. And uh, thanks for all the thumbs up. I appreciate that, guys and gals. Um, the Sensation Mini Bike, the MB-6L. The MB in MB-6L did not stand for Mini Bike. What did the MB stand for? In the sensation MB-6L, what does the MB stand for? It's an acronym. This is really delightful. I'm, I'm, I'm liking this. You guys might see me under the table before we're done. Oh, Carl. Dude, glad you're awake. MB stands for Mike Bike. 
Mike short for Michael. But uh, yeah, Mike Bike. So good grab on that, Carl. Um, gl glad you're awake. Glad you're playing. Um, you know, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Hope you're staying warm, brother, because it's nice out here. Look at that. The sun's still sort of out here. So um, hopefully by next week, I'll, I'll have some video of some bikes for you guys as well. Okay. So good, good call on the MB Mike bike from Sensation. Um, where I get these questions from, I have a customer that's uh, restoring a, a mic bike right now. Not an early one with the with the frame tubes that, that come together like that in the back, but it's got the rounded um, frame tubes. So not not a real early bike, but still a uh, still heck of a cool bike. It's got some big old bearings in the wheels too. Craziness. Um, anyway, with this engine here, my, my, my goal is 9,000, 9,500 RPM. Um, I, I've got the, the flat slide Makuni on here, and uh, we sell those. Those are included in the link that I will put back up for you now. And um, we're, we're getting started with these. We're selling a lot, and uh, these are coming right along. But let's take this off so we don't mess anything up. So I'm going to set this aside. Also, for you mini bike guys, and girls, how about an underseat staged header? We have these. They're in the link. Oh, yeah. This is a nice piece right here. Deport flange. Very nicely welded. Solid piece. I'm still going to run a brace. Um, I'll, I'll have my welder buddy uh, weld me a brace from probably about here to the flange. And or or maybe to the head if I if I bring him a, a an empty engine, um, nice piece, flange at inch and five sixteenths at the end, so um, mo power. So these are in the link. These are on the site. We have these staged under seat headers. Okay. So anyway, I've got a plethora of parts laid out here, and uh, we'll show you that in a minute. Um, one thing that I do is I lose a lot of stuff. So for me, I'm just going to go ahead and screw these back in so I don't lose them because I have a tendency to lose parts. All right, so we're going to spin this around, and we're going to take this side cover off. You'll, you'll notice that this side cover looks really, really nice. Sam Bennett, Cambo 61, burnishing. He'll do a whole engine for you. You know, you got a rusty gas tank, he'll do that for you too. Okay, so let's get this off without dropping the crank on the ground. Oh, one of the dowel pins just hit the floor. Okay. One of the problems with these cranks is crank flex. That's why you know, uh, urban legend is that every Predator engine needs a 20,000th uh, over rod. You don't need a 20,000th over rod on every Hemi or non-Hemi Predator engine. It's just not necessary. But here, here's what's going on. This crank is supported here and here by roller bearings. But there's no support in this area right here. As this engine starts rotating faster and faster, this is going to flex a little bit here and we, we like to uh, account for that flex by having 20 thousandths clearance between the top of the piston and the deck of the engine and then put a 10 thousandths head gasket on there and that gives us 30 thousandths of clearance um, the guys that, that build them tighter than that um, are using a billet crank um, which we have um, but for me, a side cover is a necessity. Um, I had to reread the article um, on ARC's blog about uh, them doing a Blockzilla engine. And they had the coil gapped at 30 thousandths. And they were running the engine for 10 minutes. And the flywheel touched the coil, shorted everything out, and stopped their test. Um, but that, that tells them, and me, because I'm smart, that... The crankshaft was flexing so much that it flexed up and allowed that flywheel to hit that coil because every roller bearing in the side 
of the case is going to have a little bit of play to it and it's only supported in two spots so ARC with their billet side cover they use a dual bearing setup and that helps to minimize the flex in this crankshaft their, their next test on that same blockzilla engine they were gapped at 18 thousandths and had no issues because they were using the dual bearing side cover so it's not just about crank crank flex um you know if you think about your clutch here and especially if you're outboard mounted on your clutch that's putting a strain you know on, on your clutch as well so it's going to make that that crankshaft give a kind of a whipping motion if you will and you know not notwithstanding the people i gave the wrong torque specs to on the side cover um the the side cover the bolts will back out and you know you'll you'll rip a gasket if you're running at real high rpms so we've got this super double extra fancy arc billet side cover this is the clone cover that fits um obviously clones gx200 and the uh, predator hemi um, there's a different cover with different valve pin sized holes for the uh, non hemi cover but we have both of those here so ARC tapes these bearings in here, and ho hopefully they're not pressed too tight. Nope, they're sliding right out. So instead of one bearing with the potential for some radial run out, put two thinner bearings in there to support that bearing to support that crankshaft. So I, I know with this side cover with the added support that it's going to provide for the block and the added bearing that uh, I can squeeze things a little tighter and not have to worry about it. Um, I, I haven't done the uh, math yet on the rest of the engine, but uh, I, I will be getting to that. Okay, so the other thing you'll notice is there's a bronze bushing here. And uh, it, it's it's got a little oil channel that helps feed that bronze bushing. And, um, you know, I know some people want a roller bearing there, but um, I, you guys know I trust an ARC. Uh, that, that, that wasn't an accident. That was on purpose. That wasn't to save money. That was on purpose. So it has a bronze bushing there. That, that The bushing will suck up some oil and um, very nice piece. But what this also does is included in the, the vast array of parts that uh, ARC gives, is extra dowel pins there's four of these and these are solid dowel pins so your your standard gx200 block has a dowel pin here and a dowel pin here but we can pin these here and like jody mentions in his video you may have to to grind that sharp edge down a little bit because we want the rounded edge out and we can drive these into the block okay so we can put an extra dowel pin here in the bottom and one here in the top. What that's going to do is that's going to give this side cover four points of reference on that block. The other thing that crankshaft flex does is it makes that block walk around. So so as, as you're real high in the RPM and making some juice, that block is walking around and moving. This is going to prevent a lot of that. There's nothing you can do to stop it completely. But this is going to make that block very rigid. Um, if, if I'm, for for me to invest the amount of money that I have going into this engine, I wanted to start with a GX200 block. Um, got a great deal from Sam Bennett on it. So Cambo61 at Yahoo.com is Sam Bennett. He's the burnishing guy that makes parts pretty. So these bearings are going to help the help reduce the crankshaft flex. And the dowel pins are going to help that block be more rigid. So, um, you know, we're taking this block out to 2.815 inches. And, um, you know, these bearings came right out, but now I'm struggling to put them in because they, the, they are a slip fit, but you got to slip them straight. There, I got that one right. Okay. Um, I'm also going to follow Jody's uh, advice. I'm going to clean this this bearing because they come pre-greased. I don't know what this grease is, and I don't know that I even want to trust it. So I'm going to clean this out, and I'll lubricate this with uh, just standard uh, oil that I'm using um, when I assemble the engine. So we'll, we'll get all these parts together. 
the other issue with crankshaft flex is you'll notice that the, the gear on this crankshaft is beveled. Well, that bevel pulls that cam out. When this starts flexing, that cam can move back and forth, and that'll affect your timing. Um, even if I don't beat the Arizona guys, at least I'll be very consistent with my power. <laughs> so um, a lot of benefit to that billet side cover. If, if you're running a, a lot of horsepower, if you have a, a built motor, buy the billet side cover. $139.95, we have them in stock. Okay, so we, we've got the crank here. Let's get another question down, okay, because Chief Longwind here talks a lot. Okay, um, now, this is an easy one. Might have to have a beer while you guys are a rumble on this one. Okay, we've all seen the uh, OMB Warehouse Clutch Band Brake Kit. Um, very nice kit, very heavy duty. Um, when, when we have a nuclear holocaust, that kit will still be here. It's very solidly made. What gauge steel is the OEM clutch brake mounting bracket? What gauge steel is the OMB warehouse mounting bracket? Cheers. Nice vanilla overtones, smooth finish. I'm liking this California creaming. Okay. Just, I, I don't want to give you guys any hints, but it was in the link that I put up. Shh. Douglas. What's a pulsar? Dude, build me a flywheel for a pulsar? I don't know. What gauge steel is the mounting bracket for the uh, OMB clutch band brake? Hold on, I gotta get a dip. Dippity doo da, dippity day. My oh my, what a wonderful day. Plenty of sunshine head my way. I'm on the west coast. Hip, hip, hooray. Yeah, it's beautiful here at the Burbank Studios. Um, Len Leno's going to do a, a show later tonight, so i got to get out of here. Tyler Bandle. Get it, brother. 11 gauge, which is uh, thicker than my skull. Tyler Bandle, good grab on that one, brother. I hope my hint worked for you. So 11 gauge steel. Um yeah, I was surprised <laughs> when I saw that too. When I when I put my first one on, I thought, darn, this is gonna weigh the bike down a little bit. Nice piece, works very well. Um, of course, make sure to lubricate your bushing. So anyway, after I get, I've, I've got to send this block out to be bored. When I got this block from Sam, um, obviously it had sat outside for a while, and there there was some ugliness to it, plenty of ugliness. So. One thing, it looked like water had seeped into the cylinder, and the cylinder ha has some ugliness to it. Not, nothing that I can catch a fingernail on, so I know it'll clean up. But we're going to clean it up with new Wiseco. It'll clean your machine. So when you look at these Wiseco pistons, I thought, what the heck's going on? They, 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 they gave me a little coin purse? Yes, they did. So here is this Wiseco piston of an undetermined diameter that's going to go in this block. Um, the Honda GX200 blocks, you can bore these out safely. Um, you know, everything's different, so don't take this as the gospel, but safely out to 2.815 inches. So this piston may or may not be that size. So, but with this piston, I had to get a different rod. I had to do some math, right? So I got the ARC. This is the 3.595 inch rod, which is their part number 6236. This is included in the link. So 
like the majority of their rods, forced oil dipper. As this is going around and around, it's scooping up oil and forcing it into the bearing. It, it's drilled all the way down in through the bottom here, so it forces oil into that bearing. I can hit the coil rev limiter at 12,000 with this rod, not a problem. So this rod, that piston, um, I've, I've got a Makuni carburetor on there that uh, we'll, we'll make some juice. We sell the Makunis now as well. So going go with the flat slide on that. And then I'm actually going with a smaller cam in my GX160 than uh, Dallas has. And, you know, that's a stock cam right there. If I didn't tell you, you wouldn't even know because you can't tell by looking at them. I mean, the lobes are different on the other one, but it's got that funky smell and uh, ear gear oil on there, keep it from rusting. So I didn't want to get my hands dirty and stinky. So anyway, this is a, what, what we call a stock core. This is a stock cam. So many of these cams are stock cores that, that Dino Cams produces. And what they do is you'll say, you know, it's a welded lobe. Well, yeah, they've got a fancy machine that, that puts weld up on top of this lobe to, to increase it, depending on, on which cam they're making, some of the lobes will be more squared on the top with high duration cams. So they'll, they'll weld on top of this and then they'll regrind them. But we've talked about this before. This is called the base circle. This is where the lifter is not lifting. The, lift, the lifter starts lifting when it gets over to the lobe here. But the base circle, because they weld it and regrind it, they're gonna reduce that base circle. So what that does, is that affects your valve train geometry. That's gonna move your push rod down and move your rocker down at the back as well. So what we're gonna do with this engine is we're actually gonna not 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 slam it together, you know, like a like an Arizona Predator, but we're gonna do the right thing. So now my hands are all greasy. Hold on. So we've got this fancy little tool. I need to get back to that ARC valve cover or a side cover. This is a push rod length tool. And for the engine to, to run properly and to take the maximum benefit from those fancy looking gauge rockers that I will not use a clear valve cover on, um, we need to be able to verify that the roller tip on the cam is swiping across the top of the valve. So let me pull these rocker arms apart. Um, when you get into high lift, and I don't, I don't have a lash cap on this. I'm my apologies for that. The roller needs to stay right on top of the valve throughout its sweep. So it, it's, it's going to start on the outside edge of the valve and then sweep towards the inside. What, what I like to do is use some uh, die cam or a blue Sharpie. I'll mark the top of my lash cap. I'll run this through its paces and I'll have a witness mark on top of the lash cap where that roller's riding. Well, that's coming back on me a little bit, um, but it's vanilla. So with this tool, I'll be able to assemble the engine with a head gasket. I'll torque it down. I'll put this tool down into the lifter, and then I can adjust this out. Oh, I've already tightened it down. I can adjust this out or in, figure out how long my push rods need to be. Then I can use this little thumb screw, and I can lock it down. That will allow me to take the uh, chrome molly cut the length push rods and get the right length and make them both uh, the same, hopefully. So th this is for, for serious engine builders, nice little tool to have. Uh, when I first got on Facebook, I, dude, I, I don't think I was on there for a week. This guy trashing OMB warehouse, you know, so, <clears throat> sold me these billet rockers. Uh, and they broke right away, and their junk and OMB warehouse is horrible. But what, what he forgot to mention to you was he didn't check anything. He, he didn't check 
his geometry. He didn't check the part where the retainer may be hitting the guide. He didn't check where the, the, the spring might be uh, coil bound. Didn't check none of that. But, you know, it's easier to blame somebody else than, than think about what I did wrong. And, you know, they're racing parts. There's no warranty on this stuff. And um, I think uh, Max at, at Gage wound, wound up setting, sending him a set of uh, roller rockers, which was very uh, generous of Max. But um, I hated it because the guy screwed up. He didn't know what he was doing. So, you know, I, I've got other people that um, – shave 60 thousandths off his head and say, hey, these rockers don't fit now. Well, what push rods are you using? Stock length. Well, if you're if you're moving everything closer, your push rods are the same length, so then your rocker arm is going to be at an angle like this. It ain't going to work. You got to know a little bit about what you're doing, which is why you're watching this, because uh, I, I'm giving you very little information. Um, anyway, David Darnell's in the house. Arizona, mini bikes and go-karts. How you doing, David? Um, and Nick, dude, man, I'm trying to scale my question knowledge back a little bit, but uh, where do I have to go with this? Um, what numbers between one and three? Um, I know you got that. That wasn't a real question, by the way. Okay. Oh, tonight, I forgot to show you guys. I like these. These don't show up real well on the camera. But this is uh, an official Gray Goat Garage thermal insulated sippy cup with a California approved, that's right, California approved stainless steel straw, right? Okay. So, and I even left the instructions inside too. So, um, tonight we're playing for this uh, ult ultra cool cup here. So, whoever wins, they're going to get the Gray Goat Garage insulated cooler insulated cup tapered so it goes into standard cup holders too this is the smartest insulated cup in the market okay uh, not just because it has the gray goat logo on it but this will keep cold things cold and it'll keep hot things hot how does it know you know like me on facebook i am eric i am help at ombwarehouse.com one thing i want to mention to you guys Right now, if you go onto the website, you're placing an order, click up at the top. We want you to join our Facebook page or our YouTube page. Click at the top of the page. You'll get 5% off. That's right, 5% off. Click at the top of the page, join our YouTube group, and uh, you're going to start seeing a lot more of this pretty face. Okay? So we're, we're, we, we started the Gray Goat Garage YouTube page, and... Um, We'll, we'll, I got a lot of work to do. I got so many videos that need to be done, redone, done over, uh, done through, uh, done. Stick a fork in it. Yeah, we got a lot. So anyway, let's get on to the question. I showed you guys this ultra beautiful ARC billet flywheel. I'll put it over there. For that billet flywheel, What's the torque spec? What do I torque it to when I'm installing it? In foot-pounds, you can just give me two digits. Quick Nick. Dude, send me an email. Help at ombwarehouse.com. Say, Greg Goat, you scammed me. Nah, I won't reply. But, you know, just put something on there, and, and, and I'll tell you how to get it. Okay? Tyler Bandel in the house, 65 foot-pounds. That's right. That's why I made this little fixture so I can hold my crank shaft. Now my pen don't write. Tyler's got two. Carl Mislowski, he's got one. So awesome job, Tyler. Get it, brother. Okay, um, 45 minutes past the hour. Let's get back to this side cover. One thing you'll notice is I've already put these two little Allen head screws into this side cover. What those do is those index with these holes here. And that's why there's solid dowel pins here. These covers go on very, very tight. 
when when you're trying to get it off, I don't want you prying on it with a screwdriver. Come on, you caveman. We we can screw these screws in, and that will pull that side cover away from the engine. It makes it real easy to take on and off. But the ARC side covers have two one eighth inch NPT holes already done. I've got uh, both the plugs in there right now, but uh, this ain't going to be plugged. And they also have an oil drain here at the bottom, especially for you uh, meth heads. Uh, I mean, the guys that run methanol, um, that will allow you to change your oil easily. Okay. So a lot, lot, lot of engineering built into this piece. Uh, make your block solid. Um, may, harder than my head. Okay. So it's got these nice, uh, super fancy um, oil caps on there that are billet aluminum with an O-ring. And um, this will allow the high RPM guys to have some extra venting in their engine. And um, I, I've got some surprises um, up my sleeve for, for that as well. So I need to beat the, uh, the boys from Arizona. It's a pride thing now. Also in the, clit, in, in the kit, you're going to notice that you have uh, a new seal for the crank. Some rubber stuff that, that's fun to flick at the kids. And you're going to have four shims. Too thick, too thin. Um, not, not that they're too thick. They're just thicker than the other ones. Um, this allows you to adjust your crankshaft end play. We want that end play to be about five thousandths, um, which is 0 .005. Um, you have to check that with a dial indicator. But as I'm assembling this engine, because I'm invested in it, um, I, I'm, I'm going to be using these to set my crank uh, end play to five thousandths. Uh, Jody has done it so many times, he can do it by feel. But these just slide right on the crank between the, the, the cam gear and the cover. Just like that. And allows you to set your end play on this crank. Setting the end play is important because we don't want that cam walking back and forth, and we don't want the, the crank walking back and forth either. Um, one thing that ARC does with that kit is they supply a gasket as well. In the rare instance that you don't have enough end play, don't use the O-ring uh, around the cover. Use the gasket and, and go from there, build from there. So... I've already done one of these, and it's actually very easy. Um, what I like to do is uh, get a little oil on it. Start this right at the top. I always start these right between where the plugs are at the top and work this around. I'm not going to do the whole thing right now because it's hard, and it take, takes some time. But once that's pushed in, um, you know, if you've watched Jody's video, he uses an old uh, push rod for this. Once it's in, take and butt them up at the end. You don't have to butt them, you know, make extra overlap it and then try and get it together. This will crush together once the, the side cover is installed on the engine. It would be real easy to install this by stretching it, but we don't want to do that because then it's not going to seal, right? So, or, or it's going to pop out of the groove. So we'll, we'll get this uh, O-ringed up. And as, uh, after I get this engine bored out and the head done, then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll start uh, assembling in this. And this will be in videos on our YouTube page at Grego Garage. Um, but we'll also do it live so you guys can see me fumble around a little bit. I know you guys like that. All right, let's get to another question here. We're running out of time. There was a mini bike called the Mini Mate. What's the name of the company that manufactured the Mini Mate? What's the name of the company that manufactured the Mini Mate? Jamie Swoyer, you know how you get one of these sweet gray goat garage shirts? You Google fast. Because the only way to win it is to. Google it.
because uh, I'm going to and ask a series of five questions. If you're the winner, you get a free shirt. You have to email me though. I mean, Ty, Tyler's uh, doing a good job right now because he's got two questions down. But uh, Simple Tom just came on and uh, nailed this last question: Allied Leisure. Um, we we know the name Allied Leisure because that's uh, Macrina's. That's um, the uh, little Indian boys. So Allied Leisure made the mini mate. I figured Tom would get that one because he's pretty sharp on that on that uh, history knowledge stuff. So I'm going to take these off, put these back in the bag till I'm ready to use it. One thing that I'm going to do is when I send this engine away to get bored out, the side cover is going to be on the engine and it's going to be torqued. What I want to do with that, and well, hopefully the guy that's going to do the boring will use a, a plate on top of the cylinder. Whenever you start torquing on the bolts, things move around. So that's why they use a torque plate on the, on the top of the cylinder. But I don't want the block to have any movement when he's doing that either. Because by pulling on these bolts, by torquing it down, I can distort this block in different directions. So when, when you're having a, a block done, especially for high performance stuff that Arizona didn't know anything about, um, have a side cover with it, send the piston with it. Have that piston fit to that cylinder and hone to that cylinder. That's the best way to make real horsepower. So we have to account for that block shifting a little bit. It is just aluminum. It can move around a little bit. So let's make sure that if you guys are going to have a block board, include the side cover that you're going to run, have it torqued down, uh, ask them if they're using a torque plate on the deck. Um, that, that's important for me um, because we're, we're going to be deep into this one. So this uh, GX160 um, will have all those parts installed once it goes out to the machine shop. Um, because the boring, it, it makes a mess, uh, and there's, there's grit and everything everywhere. I'm going to leave the bearing in, but I'm going to replace it. I'm not going to. I'm not going to try and reuse something that that's been through the boring process. Um, if you've ever seen that done, it's a machine that just spins like this, takes material away, and then they're going to put some stones and and some um, coolant material, some sort of liquid, to hone that cylinder. And they're they're going to hone it to the size of the piston. Because let's face it, every piston. I know Weiss goes very high quality, but every piston is not the same so we have to we we're only building one engine with one piston so i want that piston to fit this engine perfectly so make sure that you give them the the, the piston make sure that you have your side cover torqued on and that'll give you the best uh, best shot at making big power if uh if you were to torque your side cover on and it, it, it twisted or distorted that block sometimes your cylinder can be out of round as well and we don't want that because, you know, I, I anybody that's seen Charles' uh, mini drag bike on, on Facebook, you, you've seen some pistons that they fit in fine until you got to the bottom of the stroke, and then they didn't fit at all. Uh, the skirts were, you know, um, ga galling against the uh, cylinder. So it's all about doing things right. And I don't have all the answers, and but cer certainly have, have built plenty of engines um, whether V8s or lawnmower engines, to know the basics of this. And if you have questions, I am help at ombwarehouse.com. Like me on Facebook, follow our YouTube page, get 5% off, right? And uh, unlike so many others out there, we didn't inflate the prices on the site to give somebody a 5% discount, you know. So let's think. We do the math. We raise all our prices by 10%. Then we get 5% off. We're still making 5% more. No, we don't play that game. We have everyday low prices. You know, we're, we're, we're like that good neighbor grocery store. So cheers, OMB Warehouse. That is delightful. So it was just after Christmas. Come on, I, you know, we spent a lot of money. So this is going to take me a while. This is a long-term project. The fantastic news for me, and which makes me so excited, is Temecula Bob has agreed to build that frame for me. So um, I, I am quite uh, flattered and honored 
that uh, you know Bob would think enough from, of me to uh, build me a, a drag bike frame. So as soon as I get off my uh, and uh, get him some dimensions of the uh, tire and wheel combination we're doing, um, Temecula Bob in the house, my man. Thank you, Bob. Okay, so I'm showing you everything. Um, high performance engines. Um, you'll notice I've got a couple of fittings in here. Um, the, these are, are from my hot rod days, um, AN fittings. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to vent the, the crankcase to the valve cover. And I, I wanted to position this a little further over to the exhaust valve side because if any oil mist is going to come through this hose, I, I want it to hit the exhaust side. It'll cool that valve down. It'll cool that spring down because springs actually, by springing them like that, they get hot. Like taking a piece of bent, metal and bending it back and forth, it gets hot. Well, the same same thing with those springs. So we'll 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 concentrate on the exhaust side. We'll get a little uh, movement over to there um, with, with some extra oil, and um, ho hopefully we can make some juice out of this GX160 engine. So got one more question. This is Mother Earth Brew Company, Cali Creamen. It's it's tasting notes of vanilla bean, cool, crisp, smooth finish, ale with natural flavor added. That scares me, but um, yeah, because there there there's there's other things that we do you know at home that are natural flavored that I don't want to drink. But anyway, last question. Carl Maslowski, Simple Tom, you have a chance to tie things up at this point right now. So let's uh, get your Googles ready. You ready? I'm not. Carl, they're not empty boxes. I just showed you everything. Yeah. Oh, well, some of those are empty boxes, but I, I use a lot of cams. I built a few engines here. Okay. Seriani shocks were made where? Seriani shocks were made where? And if anybody has a West Bend 580 five port engine that they want to sell, contact me, help at ombwarehouse.com. Um, I've got a good home for it. So, Easy E, Eric Lowry. That is correct, sir. Italy, they were Italian, just like the Seabacks. So, Eric, uh, thank, thank you for answering the question, but unfortunately, Tyler Bandel is the winner. Um, Tyler, you need to send me an email, help at ombwarehouse.com, and say, hey, Greg Goat, I won, right? If you don't send me an email, I'll forget, and I, I'm very forgetful. Um, just like today, the guy says, yeah, tomorrow's Friday. I'm like, wait, what? Today's only Wednesday. And you're like, nah, today's Thursday. Oh, wow, I better get busy, right? So, yeah, we, we've uh, we, we've used some parts here. And um, like I've told you guys, just like you, I buy right off the site, okay? So I, I go on to OMBWarehouse.com. I buy just like you. I, I don't know if I'm going to sell an engine, flip it, or just uh, keep it, whatever. But um, I, I don't. I don't poop where I eat. So, you know, I uh, do, do what I can to uh, buy all the parts directly from the warehouse, just like you do. It's, it's actually a good experience for me because I want to know what the user experience is for everybody out there that's buying parts from us. Um, sometimes I have some hiccups, and hopefully I'm able to address that. If you have any problems in the site, and because we have so many items, sometimes – it's hard for our, from our perspective to know how to categorize things or where to put something. So if you th think you need something and you can't find it, help at ombwarehouse.com. Okay, that's what I do. Um, I, I think I only deal with 18,000 plus items, so no big deal. I can get you through there. So, um, and uh, yeah, Dallas, you can get a promo code by going on to ombwarehouse.com. Look at the top of the page. Don't scam us and just uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm going to have uh, a lot of videos starting up. 
I, I, I don't know when I get to sleep now, but um, we're going we're gonna to have a lot of stuff up on YouTube. And we'll be here on Facebook every Thursday night, 8 p.m. Eastern time, live from the Gray Goat Garage, right? Because that's how we roll here. So thank you for stopping by tonight. I, I appreciate each and every one of you. If you have any questions about these parts, I know I just kind of went fast and kind of glazed over uh, a lot of stuff. But if you have any questions, email me, help at ombwarehouse.com. Uh, thank you for all the, the little heart signs and the thumbs up. I appreciate that. Uh, we need that to keep this thing going. Um, hopefully next week I'll have a couple uh, a couple of my bikes to show you, uh, a couple of my projects that I'm working on. I've got the Blue Bayou and uh, the Big Banana. So we're working on that. But, um, you know, come summertime, we'll be working on a Temecula Bob frame too. Yeah, buddy, I'm so excited about that. So, Karen, warm up that sewing machine. You're going to be making me a seat again still. Okay. Thank you for stopping by. I appreciate all of you. Um, if you have any questions, you know I am the Great Goat. I'm Eric. I'm help at ombwarehouse.com. Um, you can go onto my personal Facebook page. I'm Eric Adams, and uh, you'll you'll see a nice beach and me and Mrs. Goat in a picture. So I don't have a problem with that. If you need help, you there's plenty of ways to get a hold of me. So psh, got the 800 number in the back. Um, you know the 877 number. Catch us online. Email me, help at ombwarehouse.com, and uh, check out the deals. We're, we're, we're ramping things up, okay? So if you need help with anything, I am help, and uh, I'm here. And join us again next week, same time, same goat channel, and uh, we'll teach you guys how to make some goat power, okay? Thank you for stopping by. Have a good evening. Good night. Get your motors running. Head out on the highway, looking for adventure, and whatever comes our way, yeah, I know we're going to make it happen, see the world in a loving way, fire all of your guns at once, and it's loaded for space, but like a true nature's child, I was born, born to be wild. We can fly so high, never gonna die. Born to be 